Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Kusto query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the third session in the Kusto query language beginner series. This series is intended to take you from a level with minimal technical experience to writing your first queries using the KQL language. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands-on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. In the last session, we talked about database fundamentals. We also provided a guide about how to set up a free Azure Data Explorer or ADX environment. In today's session, we'll write our first KQL queries. We'll learn where, take, and we'll also learn about pipes. If you find value in these videos, please hit the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. We left off last session with expanding the data sets and identifying clusters, databases, and tables. Although we didn't mention it in the last session, if you expand a table, you can see all the fields. This is one way to get a general idea of what data the table contains. Today, let's start out by focusing on the help cluster, the Contoso sales database, and the customers table. If you double click the customers table, you'll notice two things happened. First, the Contoso sales database is highlighted. And second, the customers table is placed in our query space. As long as the Contoso sales database is highlighted, we can query data from any of the five tables located in the database by simply typing in the table name on the first line. If you delete the extra character on line two, so there's only text on the first line, then hit the run button to execute the query. You can see all the information in the customers table. In this case, you can see how many records are found here. It also shows how long the query took to run. Technically, we've ran our first KQL query and received successful results back. While it's possible to scroll through the many records to find information of value, there are better ways to write the query to get just the information we need from this particular table. Next, we'll talk about the pipe character. It's typically found above the Enter key on most keyboards, and it looks like a vertical line. When we break down what a pipe is doing in our query, we can visualize it in this way. Each line represents a command that will be executed. In our first line, we simply typed customers, and the output of that command was to bring back all the information in the customers table. The pipe takes the output of the previous command and places it as an input to the next command. We can chain as many pipes together as we need to get just the information we want. This is useful in filtering down results, and you can envision a funnel where we keep narrowing down the information output until it's exactly what we need. On line two, below customers, we'll start the line with a pipe character. Then we'll type where in all lowercase. Where is used as a filter and is usually followed by the name of a field in which you want to narrow the data set. In this case, let's select the first name field. In this example, let's find all the records where the first name is Peter. We can type it like this. One thing that's important with KQL is that nearly everything must have the proper capitalization. If the name of the field has a capital F and a capital N, we must type it that way in our query or it will fail. Also, if the name we're searching for has a capital P, we must also type that in or it will fail. In future sessions, we'll talk about how to find the name Peter in the event somebody entered it into the database with a lowercase p. We also use double quotes to encase the exact string we want to filter. Now let's hit run and we can see how many records of customers with the first name of Peter there are. Right next to it, you can see the last names of all the Peters as well as other information associated with each person in other fields. We've already filtered down the number of records from the original table significantly, but what would happen if we entered another line with another pipe? It would take our current data set of 21 records and perform another action on that exact data set. 
Let's find all the Peters that live on the continent of Europe. We can use the continent name field and set it to equal Europe. When we run this query, we can see we now have fewer records and we can start to envision the funnel analogy and how the pipe works. For our last filter, let's filter to education of graduate degree. When we run this query, we can see we have one record. If you received an error on any of the lines, make sure you use the proper capitalization, a double equals, and you have double quotes. The information in the table may change over time, so your results may look different from the ones displayed. Now let's take a look at another table in the Contoso Sales Database, the Products table. We can leave our previous query alone for now and just enter two places. Instead of double clicking on the table we want, let's simply type the name of the table Products with a capital P on line 6. As we start to type it in, we see the IntelliSense window pop up with suggestions. We can see right away it recommends the product table. If we hit the tab key, it completes the word with a recommendation, and it automatically adds a new line and a pipe character. It's almost like ADX knows what we want to do next. Last time we started by getting the output for the entire table. But this time we'll just sample some random records on the table to see what kind of data we get back. Type in take in all lowercase letters, followed by the number 10, then hit the run key. Take produces a random sample and the number 10 represents how many records it will produce. This is a great way to take a small sample of the data set just to see what might be in it. You can also see that since we had a space between our two queries, it only executed the query that was highlighted. Remember, this is only a small subset of the overall table. We've already taken a look at two tables in the Contoso Sales Database. What if we want to now write a query for a separate database called Security Logs? As we expand the database, we see many tables. Let's try to take 10 from the email table. First, let's enter twice to get some space between our queries, so we're now on line 9. Before, we simply double-click the table and it populated. What happens if we simply type in the name of the table, then click Run? It gives us an error. It couldn't find that table. On the left, we have Contoso Sales Database highlighted. We have a couple of options here. We can simply click the Security Logs database to highlight it, and it will work just fine or we can use the following method to identify which cluster, database, and table we want to reference. As we start to type in cluster, the IntelliSense recommends it. If we hit tab, it fills in and places our cursor inside of parentheses. Let's start by typing in the cluster we're working in, which is the help cluster, then type a period. We'll now type in the database we're working in, and again, IntelliSense helps us out so we can click tab and type in security logs for our new database. Don't forget to include quotes for the strings inside of the parentheses. Lastly, let's place another period and type in the table we want. IntelliSense helps us out there too. We've now captured the full hierarchy in the first line of our new query. On the second line, let's use the pipe character and take 10 records. This time, instead of clicking the Run button, we'll use the shortcut, which is Shift plus Enter. This is the shortcut to run a query. You can see that although the Contoso Sales Database is highlighted on the left, it still executes the query successfully and shows us individual emails that were sent in the fictitious Contoso Corporation. Why do we go to all the trouble to type out the cluster, database, and table hierarchy if we don't really need to? Different users may have different data sets connected, and when you save and share queries, this helps to ensure the query runs smoothly for all people that have access to the data set, regardless of what's highlighted. For this week's homework assignment, write a query that displays the population of Arkansas. You can use the Help Cluster, Samples Database, and Population Data Table. The results of the query should only show the state of Arkansas and the population, and should have one record. 
Feel free to post your query and your results in the comments section of this video and help others to correct any errors they made as we learn together. That's all for today's session on intro to queries using where, take, and the pipe character. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at KQL syntax and understand the rules of KQL. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.